Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Keep Economic Impact Payment Notice with Other Tax Records. COVID Tax Tip 2020-74, June 23, 2020. People who receive an Economic Impact Payment, there's a link to Economic Impact Payment here, this year should keep notice 1444, your Economic Impact Payment, with their tax record. So you want to keep the record of this with your tax records. Remember that the Economic Impact Payment is, in essence, uh, linked to the tax return for 2020, which is going to, which you're going to file for in 2021. You're going to file your taxes in 2021 for 2020. So you do want to have the information related to the economic impact and make sure that you're keeping the documentation for it back to the text. This notice provides information about the amount of their payment, how the payment was made, and how to report any payment that wasn't received. Secured, uh, security reasons, the IRS mails this notice to each rec uh, recipient's last known address within 15 days after after the payment goes out so however the payment goes out however you receive the payment even if you receive a direct deposit the iris still will mail the notice to each recipient's last known address within 50 day 15 days after the payment has gone out it's especially important for people to keep this notice if they think their payment amount is wrong when they file their 2020 return they can refer to the notice 1444 and claim additional credits if, if they are eligible for them. So remember, the, the basic bottom line here is these economic impact payments went out. Why did they go out? Because the IRS wanted to, to stimulate the economy or, or put some money into the economy to help out, of course, during this time period. How did they do that? They applied it or attached it to the tax refilings that are going to happen in, in the year 2020, which means the tax returns that we're going to actually make in 2021. You're going to, you're going to, file your tax returns in 2021 for the year of 2020. So the IRS basically made their best guesses as to applying this thing to the tax return that's going to be done in the future. And then they sent out the payments. So that means that typically it's going to be correct because it, they're pretty basic calculations. They basically sent it out based on basic information. But it could be possible that, that there's something that is wrong with it. And if there's something that is wrong with it, you want to, it's going to be adjusted. Their, their thought is that it's going to be adjusted. We'll fix it at the point in time that you file the taxes for 2020. So if there's any, if there's any error with the economic impact payment, then that should come to light. And if it was underpaid or something like that, then possibly you can get the difference when you file the 2020 tax return in 2021, because that's basically how, how it has been set up. In order to do that, in order to make that as easy as possible, you want to make sure that you're keeping the notice so that if, there's, if there is any kind of change that needs to be made at that point in time, you have the information to file the tax return to do so. Back to the text. Taxpayers should keep this notice filed with, with all their other important tax records. This include W-2s from the employer, 1099s from banks and other payers, other income documents, and virtual currency transaction records. All taxpayers should keep a copy of their past tax returns and supporting documents for at least three years. And note that three years is really the minimum. You might want to hold on to them longer than that as well, because really when we file the tax returns, oftentimes we think, hey, we filed the tax return, we got a refund, they must have accepted it, everything is good going forward. But they can go back and audit it within the three-year period. So the fact that they just accepted the numbers on the tax return is fine, but they could, they do have the ability, statute of limitations, to go back and do an audit. And they may do that even randomly, even if, you know, they, they, they could do some random uh, audits and whatnot just to, just to, as part of their auditing process. And so you could get audited within that three-year period, or they could come back and ask some questions. And you want to have your records to be able to say, hey, here's my W-2 or whatever I need for that. Now, typically, if it's past three years period, they could still even go back if under certain circumstances uh of, of a larger period of time depending on the on the on the level of potential tax uh tax problem that there that there would be ver reporting versus what they think the actual tax would be so if so they could go back further than that i would hold on to the taxes longer than that but within the three-year period they could just go back for for no reason they could just randomly pick your return still and and audit you for for that so for the three years for sure you want to you want to keep the records in case they have any any kind of questions for them back to the text key information uh, from their prior year return may be required to file next year 
Life changes like employment and marital status and financial gains or losses can affect a tax refund or the amount, a tax, amount of taxes a person may owe. The tax filing deadline. There's a link to the tax filing deadlines here. Obviously, we've had a lot of changes with deadlines. So if you got any questions on the tax filing deadlines, you can go to this link. There'll be a link to this in the description. So the tax filing deadlines have been postponed to Wednesday, July 15th, 2020. The IRS is processing tax returns, uh, issuing refunds, and accepting payments. Taxpayers who mailed a tax return will experience a longer wait. There's no need to mail a second tax return or call the IRS. Note the IRS for a long time has been pushing forward to try to try to move away from the paper mailing tax return and whatnot, and do the online and do the online banking. It's basically easier for them to do so. With with the problems that have currently happened and the social distancing, they have that's you know they're kind of pushing harder on that now. So the paper tax returns uh, could take longer, almost certainly will take longer uh, to to process, and so more and more you probably want to do the electronic filing if possible. So more information, there's links to more information here. There'll be a link to this in the description.